leaving the rough makeshift camp on Ambria that served as their home for a decade. Darth Bane and his apprentice Darth Zena forged new identities and spent the next ten years in a beautiful, luxurious mansion on Sutric Four. at last experiencing pleasurable surroundings after so much time purposely living on the edge of survival. Continuing Xana's training, Bane sent her on important missions which both served to further their plans of secretly gaining influence across the galaxy and forced her to use her powers and mental acuity in practical situations. Xana proved so adept and successful in everything she did, Bane was proud to realize there was little more he could teach and certain she would soon challenge for leadership. Yet as time wore on and the apprentice gave no signs of seeking to overthrow her master, Bane grew disillusioned and wondered if she was worthy of his legacy. By 980 BBY, at the age of 46, Bane noticed an involuntary trembling in his hand. Recognizing that his physical deterioration was starting, largely as an inevitable consequence of intense, long-term exposure to the dark side. Though Bane had no fear of death, he was worried the Sith Order would be left in the hands of an unworthy acolyte, reasoning that Xana's hesitation to kill him must come from fear, indecision, or compassion, none of which were acceptable mindsets, as a Dark Lord of the Sith must be fiercely ambitious, ready and willing to challenge their master when both were at the height of their powers. Certain that Xana noticed his trembling hand, but still would not challenge him, Bane concluded she must be waiting for old age to weaken him, meaning she was unworthy to take over the Sith. Yet Bane also recognized he was running out of time, and might die or lose his strength before training a new apprentice, therefore putting the Order at risk. Seeking a solution to this problem, Bane, at some point in his continuing studies of the ancient Sith, read about Darth Endedu, a great Dark Lord with a never-found holocron who supposedly discovered a dark side ritual to extend his life beyond its natural span. But the text contained no more information, and Bane could find no other mention of him anywhere until a contact who dealt in Sith artifacts finally came through with information that led him to the deep core world of Praketh, where Endedu ruled as an immortal god king. Sending Xana to the planet Dome, Bane tasked her with investigating the murder of a Jedi in order to distract her while he made his way to Praketh, where he was attacked by Endedu cultists, easily cutting them down before taking the ancient holocron. Studying under the Endedu figure who emerged from the device, Bane grew impatient as the master refused to impart his immortality ritual until satisfied that his student was worthy, a process poised to take a very long time. Unwilling to wait, Bane used his immense powers to forcibly peer into the holocron's inner workings, taking the information he needed. Discovering the dangerous ritual of essence transfer, Bane learned how to send his consciousness into the body of another, starting a mental battle of wills between host and invader, with the winner taking possession of their physical form, while the loser was cast out into the void, unable to move into the discarded body as it was destroyed in the ritual. Returning to Sutric 4, Bane entered his mansion and unwittingly walked right into a trap set up by a Force-sensitive Itachi Huntress, leading armed mercenaries for his capture. Despite having the element of surprise, an overwhelming advantage in numbers, special equipment like sonic detonators, and a Force-sensitive Itachi using her powers to weaken Bane's abilities, the Dark Lord overcame their attack, took out several mercenaries, and was about to finish off the Huntress, when the special Senflex poison that coated her blades finally took effect, and he collapsed unconscious. As fate would have it, the Huntress and mercenaries were hired by Sarah, a noble lady of Dome with a long and tragic history stemming from her connection to the Sith Lord Darth Bane. Decades earlier, Sarah was the daughter of Caleb, a great healer on Ambria, but after Darth Bane arrived and threatened her life, she was sent away for her own safety, never seeing her father again. Finding a brief respite from the years of misery, she fell in love with the Prince of Dome, becoming a noble lady and royal princess living in luxury. Yet again, she entered a deep depression when her husband was killed by a rebel leader. Seeking vengeance for her friend, Sarah's bodyguard and confidant Lucia secretly hired the Itachi Huntress to kill the rebel responsible, but in doing so also took out a Jedi who was nearby. Upon learning what Lucia did, Sarah was not upset and in fact thanked her friend before hatching a plan of her own, wanting further vengeance for past wrongs. Having learned that her father Caleb was killed on Ambria by the same Sith Lord who threatened her as a child, they once again hired the Itachi Huntress who was highly prized for her ability to locate any target she wanted through her strong though underdeveloped force powers. Aware Bane was dangerous, the Itachi planned the trap carefully and succeeded in immobilizing, capturing, and transferring Bane to Sarah's custody on Dome. 
Eager to confront the monster that murdered her father, Sarah was disappointed to see Bane showed no remorse or sympathy, and even mocked her by revealing he was not the one who actually killed her father, as that was his apprentice, Senna. Administering more Senflax, Sarah left for a time, which was long enough for her best friend Lucia to inject their captive with medicine, reversing the effects of Senflax, thereby giving him a chance to escape. Though Lucia hated herself for betraying her friend, she could not abandon Bane, who she knew as Dessel, the former sergeant of the Gloomwalkers that saved her life all those years ago. Recognizing his face, Lucia struggled with what to do, but ultimately decided she owed him a debt that must be paid. Waking up with his powers somewhat restored, Bane went on a rampage as he escaped until running into Lucia, who told him what she did, explaining their past connection, and asked only that he spare her friend Sarah from further harm. Though Bane stopped being Dessel long ago, her words gave him pause, knowing he should destroy her and move on, but unsure whether he would. Yet the decision was quickly taken from him as Darth Zanna appeared nearby and launched a devastating attack that killed Lucia. Having last seen each other on Sutric 4, Xana went off to learn about the dead Jedi on Dome, and throughout that investigation met and defeated Set Hearth, a wealthy dark Jedi using his Force powers to secure personal pleasure rather than any larger philosophical goal. Disgusted by his attitude, she nonetheless saw potential in his abilities and took him on as an apprentice. Despite what Bane believed, Xana had not lost her ambition and simply held back on challenging her master for two reasons. First, she noticed his hand trembling and thought perhaps it was a test, that he was purposely showing weakness so she would issue a challenge before she was ready. Secondly, she wanted to find an apprentice of her own so that when Bane was gone, their Sith plans could continue without delay. Now that she found Set Hearth, she believed everything was in place and so decided to challenge her master upon returning home. Yet Bane was not present when she arrived, learning through her own contacts and investigation that her master left for Prakith, likely seeking Darth and Dedu's immortality ritual, returned home and was somehow taken captive. Though all of these events were surprising, she was most outraged by his quest for immortality as it was a direct contradiction to the rule of two, believing he now sought to reign forever, denying her the opportunity to advance and the order the chance to evolve and grow over time. Seeking to eliminate her traitorous master, she tracked him down to an old stone prison on Dome, where Set was left with the ship, while Xana sought to rescue and then eliminate Darth Bane. Confronting each other at last, Xana explained why she was upset, calling Bane a traitor and weak for allowing himself to be captured and cornered without a weapon. Her master then explained his side, claiming he was only seeking an extension of his life to train a new apprentice since she had proven unwilling to take the mantle. Engaging in battle, they were eventually separated when the building started to collapse as Sarah activated a self-destruct sequence in the hope of killing the escaping Sith Lords. When Xana returned to her ship, she found Set Hearth gone, having abandoned her and stolen the holocron of Darth and Dedu. Oppositely, when Bane sought a ship of his own, he was met by the Force-sensitive Itachi Huntress, who explained she attacked him because it was her job, but now that was over and she wished to become his apprentice, as he was, by far, the strongest Force user she'd ever seen. Impressed by her skills and attitude, he accepted the Huntress, and in the tradition of their order allowed her to take a new name, becoming the Sith Apprentice Darth Cognus. Seeking to settle the issue with his former apprentice now rival, Bane sent Xana a message instructing her to meet on Embrya. Though Xana was upset with Bane, she thought about what he said and realized perhaps he had not betrayed the Rule of Two, and really was just responding to her perceived lack of ambition. Therefore, when she got the message, she made her way to Embrya, where Bane introduced her to Darth Cognus, instructing the new apprentice she was not to interfere in their battle and would instead train under whoever was victorious. With all three in agreement, Xana and Bane faced off in single combat to the death. Engaging in lightsaber combat, Bane quickly gained the upper hand, and so Xana called upon Sith sorcery to break his mind. Knowing this was her specialty, he was ready and repelled her illusions, causing Xena to make one final attack, summoning dangerous dark side tendrils that destroyed everything they touched. Noticing this attack was consuming all her effort and concentration, Bane maneuvered past these creations and was about to strike her down when a wild tendril suddenly cut off his arm, blinding him with pain so intense he collapsed, his body defeated. Seeing no other choice, Bane launched a final desperate mental attack, using his knowledge of essence transfer to release his consciousness from his body which was immediately destroyed before entering Xana's mind to engage in a battle of wills. Struggling against each other, for a brief moment, Bane could feel himself taking control of her body, but in the end could not best his younger opponent and was pushed from her mind, leaving him exiled to the great void of death. 
Rising from the ground, the victorious woman declared herself master of the Sith Order, and while a small portion of Bane's influence remained inside her, it was Darth Xena and her apprentice Darth Cognus that continued his legacy. For the next thousand years, the Baneite Sith Order was guided by the rule of two as their core philosophy, embracing Bane's ideas by using stealth, secrecy, and patience as weapons of war. Eventually, Darth Sidious and his apprentice Darth Vader achieved Bane's dream, destroying the Jedi Order while replacing the Republic government with a Sith Empire. Yet Darth Sidious proved unable to maintain his empire, and was ultimately struck down by his apprentice during the Battle of Endor in 4ABY. Though Sidious failed to properly capitalize on the legacy of the Sith, Darth Bane's influence was felt throughout the galaxy, continuing to inspire ambitious Sith Lords like Darth Krait, who studied Bane's holocron, and was even rebuked by the image of the Ancient Master, who warned that Krait's Rule of One philosophy would ultimately lead to his downfall, as the Rule of Two was the only true path for the Sith Order. A special thanks to all those who contribute to Civilization X, like John Amber of White Fork, Tim Parachado, and Lady J Book Nerd. If you'd like to help the channel, be sure to give a like, leave a comment, subscribe, and click on the links below, or else go to patreon.com slash civilizationx, where you can gain early access to videos, vote on future content, and watch the Patreon-only series, Heroes of Lore and Legend.